everyone and welcome to our Brendan Grant Budget Special webinar in which we will be examining the announcements Chancellor Jeremy Hunt made yesterday. Being the last budget before the deadline election, we expected some favourable tax cuts in order to win last minute confidence in voters. Um, but we got a rather mixed bag with some good policy announcements, but with some rather costly for other taxpayers. I'm Christy and this is Ashley. So without further ado, let's look at the announcements. One of the announcements made yesterday was of the new UK ISA. This will be a £5,000 ISA allowance on top of your standard ISA allowances that you get every year. And the purpose of this is to promote investments into UK businesses. As it stands, we don't know when this will be coming into place, but the proposal is currently out and we will hear further details at some point soon. The other big change, which was anticipated, was the change to child benefit. The current rates for paying back child benefit and having the child benefit tax charge was, is if you earn over £50,000, you will begin to lose your child benefit and if you earn over £60,000, it will be lost in its entirety. These will be changing to £60,000 and £80,000. So as soon as you earn over £60,000, you will begin to lose your child benefit and at 80000 it will be lost completely. So if you're in between those two, you'll have to do a tax return in order to declare your income and the child benefit charge to HMRC. These changes will be coming into place after the 6th of April 2024. By April 26, there will be a new household based system for child benefit but there's no further details on these yet. We also saw the Chancellor raise the VAT registration threshold from 85,000 to 90,000. And whilst this is a welcome change and it won't harm anything, it isn't as helpful as it could be. Um, if the threshold was frozen since 2017, so if it was increased inflationary since then, it really should be about 105,000 pounds. So we're still seeing many businesses being pulled into the VAT regime as a result of fiscal drag. In the autumn statement, we saw the Chancellor reduce the rate of employees' national insurance down from 12% to 10%, and he's now gone even further by reducing it to 8%. This means for an employee earning £50,000 a year, they will see their pay packet go up by £125 a month. However, there was no changes for employers and in the employer's rate of national insurance still stands at 13.8% above salaries of 9,100. There were welcome announcements for self-employed individuals. We've already seen class two being abolished, saving 179 pounds a year for self-employed individuals. But the chancellor also reduced the rate of class four national insurance from 8% to 6%. So for a self-employed individual earning £50,000 a year, they will see savings of £1,302 a year. What this means is that the gap between operating as a sole trader or incorporating into a limited company is narrowing. Um, it used to be a lot more tax efficient to operate as a limited company. However, with the dividend allowance going down, dividends are getting slightly more expensive, whereas the rates of national insurance are coming down for self-employed individuals. So incorporating your business may now be more of a commercial decision rather than a tax-based decision. There have also been changes to the UK residency and domicile regime. The current system will be abolished and there will be a new residence-based regime from the 6th of April 25. What this means is new arrivals to the UK can claim 100% tax relief for their foreign income and gains for the first four years of residency in the UK. If you have already lived in the UK and will have done for less than four years to the 6th of April 25, there will be transitional rules in place so you can have some of the relief. It doesn't mean that you will also get the ta standard tax free allowances as a U normal UK resident will do unless there is a double taxation treaty in place. After the four years, you will then be taxed as if you're a UK resident on your worldwide income on an arising basis. 
It doesn't mean that you can come and go from the UK every four years just to get these reliefs though. You have to have been non-UK resident for the 10 years previous to that tax year to get the reliefs. So four years. The next set of changes were for capital gains tax on residential properties. We've already seen the annual exempt amount being reduced drastically over the last few years from 12,000 all the way down to 3,000 coming in the coming April. So the reduction in the higher rate of capital gains tax for residential properties was a welcome change from the Chancellor. Instead of the current 28%, the higher rate will be reduced to 24%, with the basic rate 18% remaining unchanged. So it may be worthwhile if you're in the process of selling a residential property in potentially deferring the exchange date until the new tax year so that you can benefit from these new rates. One of the other changes relating to property is the abolishment of the furnished holiday let regime. This will be from the 6th of April 2025. What this means for people with furnished holiday let is that there will no longer be capital allowance relief on large purchases as well as their profits will no longer class as earnings for pension purposes. Along with this, finance costs relating to the furnished holiday let will only get basic rate tax relief. There will be a loss of the small business rates relief as well, and also the potential for business asset disposal relief, where CGT is at 10% as opposed to normal residential property rates. This will also be gone. We also saw some announcements surrounding stamp duty. So while the rates remain unchanged, we did see multiple dwellings relief get abolished. So multiple dwellings relief is applicable where someone purchases more than one dwelling in the same transaction from the same seller all for one agreed price. Um, it acts to reduce the amount of stamp duty to broadly the same amount of stamp duty you would pay if you were to buy these two properties separately. Um, so that will be gone from the 1st of June 2024 and there will be transitional rules in place for those properties that have already exchanged before then. That's it for our budget summary. If you have any questions, please contact your client manager. Thank you for listening.